Okay, so it's recording. All right, I'll wait till it ticks right at eight and we'll, there we go. Good morning on this Monday, May the 17th at 8 a.m. Uh, this is our second return, if you will, to the Coffee Talk with the Mayor series uh, since uh, the challenges of last year forced us all to uh, seek shelter and uh, not be as involved personally as we want to be type thing. Uh, last month, if you remember, we went over the city center project and had some good participation, good questions there, gave the history and all that. And uh, this month's topic is on our East Butler Road corridor, uh, revitalization, if you will. Um, that's going to, let's talk about the project itself. The project goes from our main street, uh, our 276, and heads eastward down in front of City Hall across the railroad tracks, originally all the way out to Bridges Road. Um, one of the early uh, meetings that they had, public input meetings, uh, we reviewed the fact that they had already done the Bridges Road intersection and had impacted the uh, uh, open air market. And uh, there was a lot of pushback that didn't want to do that again. So. They brought the project backwards, if you will, to stop at the entrance to the city park, our, our Ray Hawkins Senior Center, uh, at that driveway there. Um, the city agreed that that would be a good stopping place because we wanted to tie the uh, multi-use path into our walking trail that's around the uh, city park that's already existing that we plan to revitalize also. So that would give us the connection around the park come up on Corn Road and then cross over and go on up East Butler to tie into the uh, uh, walking trail segment that we have just paved and uh, is almost at completion. It will take us to the uh, bridge over 385 for pedestrian uh, traffic. So uh, all that should tie into the Swamp Rabbit Trail segments we're looking for. So. All of that's part, we'll talk about more about that multi-use path as we get further into uh, today's uh, session. And we're gonna go over that. Uh, first thing I was gonna do is open it up to anyone that uh, might have a question. I'll go ahead and jot it down to be sure I would answer it during the uh, my talking or presentation part of this today's. Uh, don't see anybody with uh, hands raised or anything right now, but. Uh, if you do have a, a question or a comment, uh, we'll come back to you on that also. To give you some idea of the East Butler Road corridor uh, revitalization, uh, also known as buildingabetterbutler.com from uh, South Carolina DOT, give you a little bit of the history. Um, we knew years ago that it was going to have to be uh, repaved and there was various studies done and various ideas. South Carolina Department of Transportation said, let's continue the five lane uh, segments like we did on West Butler and take it all the way out to the high school also. Um, our city planners, our, our vision statement and other feedback said we really didn't want to lose um, the feel that we had of a downtown uh, concept uh, by making it five lanes. We didn't think we wanted East Butler to be like West Butler. So uh, a series of public meetings were held. We uh, incorporated the uh, study or uh, contracted with a company tool design group uh, with Sprague and Sprague Engineering. Uh, to do a study that was done 2014, 2015. Um, and it came because this project was going through the study committee called GPAT, the Greenville Pickens Area Transportation Study. Uh, it's made up of uh, various municipalities from Clemson to uh, Greer, along with Greenville County, City of Greenville, uh, some of our elected legislature uh, members are members of that, our county council members. Uh, it's the policy committee is 31, I think at last time I counted, 31 voting members of uh, that. So all these projects with various funding goes through them, gets prioritized and assigned. 
And the East Butler Road has been on the books, if you will, 10 or 12 years, working its way up through the process, uh, seeking funding. And uh, when that finally was uh, coming into, let's call it the top 10, uh, we wanted to put together a, a vision and uh, what Malden wanted. Uh, so we took the transportation uh, department's uh, study and looked at it kind of thing and had a, a series of public meetings, uh, took our vision statement, because remember we've been talking about a downtown area city center concept, walkable village concept for many, many years. And well, how did we tie into that and uh, do the transportation on? Did we want a five lane road? Do we want to stay with a, what they call a three lane, which is a two lane with a center turn lane in the middle. Uh, all that was open. Uh, we had input from business uh, owners as well as citizens uh, with the O2 design group. And we put together the study that was released in 2016 that showed overwhelmingly there was some uh, uh, city situations or city opportunities that uh, had not been thought of and we wanted to uh, get those uh, up front also. So put together that, that uh, study, uh, published it, sent it to Department of Transportation, and uh, we did the traffic studies. Uh, there was input from Upstate Alliance, 10 at the top, uh, as to what was going to happen with the city of Malden, what would be our transportation need, how did we want to tie it into our vision uh, with the city center concept type thing. Uh, it overwhelmingly came back that we wanted to stay with the three lane concept. Uh, we wanted to dress it up with uh, some planted medias, um, some greenery in the middle. So as you're coming into the uh, uh, center of our city, you would notice that uh, this is different. Let's slow down a little bit and see what's going on uh, that. Uh, we knew 276 for Main Street was kind of uh, not appropriate to do something as simple, well, it wasn't simple as our sister city did, city of Sensefield narrowing the four lane down to two lane as you got into their downtown proper. Um, didn't make sense on 276 with the volume of traffic and the projections there uh, and everything. So uh, we started to focus on our East Butler Road segment of that. So that was the main thing. And then to consider the businesses that align up down to uh, East Butler Road, along with our entrance to our residentials, uh, three or four intersections along that, what all we needed to do. And the study came back and said, uh, we need to be sure we improve the traffic flow. The volume was gonna be okay. East Butler Road with uh, the planned three lane uh, would handle the volume projections with the growth that's coming all the way through 2030, 2040 timeframe. Uh, that was the traffic study that was done in the old tool design in uh, 2015, 2016. There are some intersections that are bottlenecks as many of us know that travel it every day. Uh, if you're coming down East Butler, either way, eastward or westward, and you come up to those intersections and somebody's turning right uh, off that or left, you know that traffic pretty much stops. Uh, so with DOT involvement, we knew that they needed to be turning lanes or turning areas that you could turn right and get out of the main flow and keep that traffic flowing. Uh, sound like a good idea. The study validated that. And so we put that together. And uh, as the East Belt Road Corridor finally came to the top of the 10 list with the GPAC committee, funding became available. Now that, that funding is made up of various sources. Uh, the biggest bulk of it is from the federal government, uh, which comes with strings and uh, requirements also type thing. So $17 million was approved for the one point seven mile East Butler Road corridor. Uh, I think 1.5 million has been spent on engineering. So that leaves us with roughly about $15 million uh, for the actual right of way and uh, construction. Uh, currently on uh, the schedule to begin construction actually early spring of 2023 um, and completed by 2024. 
24, end of 24, early 25, I believe, type thing. But uh, how did we get there? Let's go over part of that uh, other than I've been referring to the old tool study that's uh, online. You can see that. Uh, also, the uh, DOT came in and did, as they started the engineering, they did a traffic study also. Uh, same conclusion, it came back. Uh, the traffic volume was not going to be needed or did not justify a five lane road. Uh, it also caused the width of East Butler to be uh, fairly large and which required more right away, more property acquisition, more impact to ever intersection type thing. So when their traffic study confirmed our traffic study, their engineering then focused on just staying with the three lane type thing and also how do we fix the intersections to number one, improve traffic flow the volume is okay yes you're seeing more cars yes it's getting a little more crowded uh yes it takes a little bit longer to get down uh east butler if you're coming into our core of our city up to our main street or 276 so that was going to take uh into consideration um it takes longer is more traffic how do you handle that and the key here uh is traffic flow Keep the traffic moving flow. Get the east, uh, the left turns, the right turns out of the center throughput lane, and that will improve traffic uh, flow. Uh, there's engineers involved that are a lot smarter than I am and know this kind of stuff. Uh, DOT has some of the finest ones uh, they can find. Uh, so we have to uh, take that in consideration. And what we were more concerned was with the aesthetics and also the fact that as our studies indicated, we wanted to be sure that there were parallel corridors, per perpendicular corridors that would get you in, through, and around Malden if you chose to. Uh, we have a beautiful 385 southbound that uh, gets us past the east side. Uh, actually, it comes through Malden now because we've got uh, city limits on both sides of 385. It comes to a big four lane uh, for Highway 417, we call it the uh, link to uh, Simpsonville. So you can actually come around the east side of Malden and then come in on 417, and it'd be the south side of Malden and then come back in type thing. So those are major through fares. Uh, West Butler, of course, the five lane is a phenomenal uh, link all the way out to I 85. Um, so that was it. So we focused on the East Butler Road side of it and what we can do there. Um, so remember our, our main thing, traffic flow, not volume, the flow. We keep the flow going, it will handle the volume based on the traffic studies through the growth that we're gonna have roughly 3% growth uh, through 2030, 2040. And as I said in the last segment, when we talked about the city center, the growth is coming. Now, we don't have to do anything and the people are coming. We've done a phenomenal job of selling the state of South Carolina is a great place to live, work and play. Greenville County area, fantastic growth coming there. Uh, City of Mold is no exception. Uh, the word is out. It's a great place to live, to own a home uh, or a, a resident, to uh, raise a family, uh, to uh, worship. Uh, and we're fixing the shop thing. We, uh, we lose a lot of business uh, leaving the city of Malden because of our uh, lack of some of the uh, new amenities that people uh, are telling us they want. Uh, and so we've been focusing on improving those uh, retail outlets, uh, restaurants, um, uh, coffee shops, and those type of things. So that's going on at the same time uh, as we figure out what we're gonna do with the people that are coming, where we're gonna put them, the housing is coming online. Uh, I think the latest numbers are somewhere this year, 1,200 homes will come on over the next five years. I'll use five years as probably there's some experts here that can tell you better, but over the next five years, we'll probably see uh, up to 7,000 homes in the uh, city of Malden. Uh, not talking about the core, I'm talking about the entire city of Malden, which uh, is now on the uh, west side from uh, Fort Shoals Road all the way over to uh, Woodruff Road on the east side. Uh, 
and north, of course, all the way up to Forrester Drive. Uh, south, I'm not sure. I'd say Standing Springs Road is kind of the southern boundary. We do cross over 385 on a, a, some segments also on 417. So we're growing, and uh, that is demand for housing. Uh, the demand is coming. Uh, the people are coming. So one of our focus in the focus of this session is how do we uh, keep them moving through City of Malden and also give them reasons to stop. So we're working on that type of thing. But I don't want to get carried away with that again. We covered that last month, uh, but we do want to talk about our East, East Butler Road project. So uh, let's look at it again. This segment we're talking about doing will go from 276 nor, um, North and South Main Street, heading eastward down East Butler Road. You're going to cross over railroad tracks. Uh, you've got Owens Lane intersection there. You got Murray and Fairfield. Uh, go on past the uh, sports center around the curve. There's some retails on left and on the right. Then you come to a red light, and we've got an intersection there with uh, Bonaire Street and Hyde Circle. Hyde Circle is a city owned street. That's ours just been paved last year. You should see that uh, beautiful uh, paving was done. That uh, To the right, Bonaire Street, that's a state road. So South Carolina DOT owns that road as well as East Butler Road. Uh, and I believe Owens Lane, I didn't cover that, but I think that's also a state road. So that means they have the responsibility for the maintenance and the upkeep on those roads. Uh, if When I say city street, that means city of Malden owns it. We maintain it. And uh, we can talk about the, uh, I think it's $2.7 million that uh, this council uh, allocated last year for our approximately 80 something miles of city owned streets. And uh, we did the engineering study. We had a professional company come in and do the complete survey of our streets and our uh, sidewalks. And they ranked them scientifically with data as to what shape they're in, A being fantastic, excellent, to uh, F meaning it's failed, is uh, in desperate need. And so council authorized city administrator uh, who put together a fantastic plan with the public work and with our transportation uh, partners. And uh, we're in the process of covering all of the graded F and even the Ds on our city on street. So that's a little side uh, advertisement, if you will to show you we are focused on getting our city on streets in good shape. Not to say we're not working with our partners, uh, South Carolina DOT and Greenville County to uh, do the other streets that we know are uh, in desperate need of uh, upfit, if you will. Anyway, heading on east, we go past the Murray Fairfield Drive around Bonaire to East, uh, east Butler. The next intersection you come to, which does not have a traffic light, is the old mill road that breaks off to the left of East Butler. And then within, uh, what, 100 feet, 200 feet, you have the Bethel Drive that breaks off to the right. Um, that's uh, a major area that needed attention to traffic bottlenecks there, a good bit type thing. Head on eastward, uh, the next uh, major roads that come in, it's a little bit, um, uh, unusual or a little bit confusing unless you uh, <laughs> grew up here and know it, but that's uh, Brook Bend who has, it has two entrances to the Holly Springs subdivision off to the right. Of course, you see the townhomes being off to the left there. Uh, and then uh, we come on an upward hill and uh, pass our ball fields. You can see them on your left. And we're gonna end this project at uh, the entrance to City Park and the Ray Hopkins Senior Center. So. That's the segment, it's roughly 1.7 miles that we're gonna focus on. Uh, also the old tool study in 2015, 2016 identified along with our city planners and the uh, uh, surveys that are done nationwide as well as the state of South Carolina. I alluded to Upstate Alliance and Tenant at the Top. They brought in some experts to, to speak to the municipal leaders and uh, present plans to show what was happening in other small towns. And also the demographics of the people that are moving here uh, shows that we're moving into, and we're, we're actually already into it, of uh, walkability. Uh, we would like to be able to have nice, safe sidewalks to walk on, safe from the flow of traffic, and also 
a multi-use path, uh, which is a larger sidewalk, if you will, and uh, but it also would handle bicycle traffic there. Uh, the study showed the videos, if you saw the old tool design and the videos that were done there, showed bicyclists attempting to ride East Butler Road on the right-hand side. Uh, it wasn't safe for the bicyclists. It wasn't safe for the uh, automobile drivers. Um, the at one time, that was the preferred way for bicyclists does to give them a bicycle path on the main through fair. I think it was 18 inches, two foot wide, something like that. Um, that is not what the new studies show. They show we want to move that traffic off of the main through fares. And so the multi use path concept would be able to handle pedestrian traffic as well as bicyclists. Uh, off of the main through fare and keep the traffic flowing without concern of that type of thing. So those were incorporated in the old tool design along with the uh, South Carolina DOT and their studies also and felt that was the way to go. It also allows those multi-use paths to be tied into uh, future plans and some of our existing uh, Swamp Rabbit Trail segments and uh, throughout our city. And yes, there's seven or eight or nine different potential segments. Some of them utilizing uh, pathways along Gilder Creek, uh, Blue Line Tributary, Gilder Creek itself. Uh, there is some easements uh, that is owned by uh, Rewa that we could uh, possibly put paths down. Uh, there's some uh, passive land now that we can do something with right off of Libby Lane and East Butler. So we're looking at all that. Um, all these are being talked about. They incorporate heavily into the multi-use paths and moving pedestrians and uh, bicyclists and keeping them off the main through fares of East Butler where we're keeping the traffic flowing, which is a secret to this whole process here. So that's kind of where we're at on the East Butler Road project and uh, what we're attempting to do. Uh, let's take each segment and I'll give you an update on uh, where we stand um, Many, many meetings are going on with our city leaders, our city planners, our administrators, uh, as well as myself with South Carolina DOT on this particular project, uh, as well as through the GPAT committee type thing. Um, so we're trying to get it right. Uh, we're trying to be sure that the city of Malden's vision and our plans are uh, incorporated into the DOT project. Remember, East Bell Road is a state-owned road. So South Carolina DOT has the ultimate uh, decision and the ultimate uh, responsibility for repaving that. And I'll give you where we're at on the various things here. Let me take a little sip of my coffee. Uh, the old days, we call that weapon or whistle. All right, so let's start back here on Main Street. The first thing, those of you who drive East Butler Road every day know when you come up and you pass City Hall and you get to the red light at 276, if you're heading westward, uh, you come up to 276 off East Butler after you pass City Hall, you come to the red light. It's two lanes straight through, there's a left turn lane. Left turn arrow for the left turn lane. There is no right turn lane. So if someone chooses to or has to turn right in this red light uh, and traffic is flowing, they sit there. Well, as they sit there, uh, that backs up other people who want to turn right and also those who want to go straight through. So when the light turns green, then that right turn light traffic doesn't move as fast as the ones that could go straight through. So that kind of says you need a right turn lane there. So if you had two lanes straight through, a right turn lane, left turn lane, uh, the theoretical the studies show that that would improve flow at that particular intersection. Now let's move back down eastward. You come past City Hall, you, uh, you see, we're going to head eastward here like we're driving eastward, okay, which is toward the high school. You have Owens Lane that comes at an angle on your right. Uh, that's within, it can't be more than 50 feet to the railroad track. That is an active railroad track, as all of you know that live here. Uh, so there's a lot of technical requirements that come in there that when traffic is flowing from there, you've got to be able to back it up to stay safe off the railroad tracks if the uh, cross arms come down type thing. 
Uh, also, it has two lanes there. A part of it, if you're turning right on the East Butler, not too bad. The line of vision sometimes is difficult there. But if you try to turn left off the o, off of Owens Lane onto East Butler, heading back towards City Hall, you realize that is not easy to do. Uh, it causes a lot of potential areas, and that is a major impact area that DOT's looked at, O2 Design looked at, the city has looked at, and we've had three or four different visions on uh, what we could possibly do there. Current plans. Just had a meeting last week with DOT. The update there is uh, right turn only out of Owens Lane. However, you will be able to turn off of East Butler onto Owens Lane. There's uh, three to five businesses there that consider that essential to their business. So uh, their opinions were heard, factored in. So the current process is, uh, as I understand it now, is East Butler will get right turn only off of Owens Lane, but you will be, if you're heading westbound, be able to turn left into Owens Lane there. Uh, but no left turn off of the Owens onto East Butler. Uh, and that gets you at the, just as you cross the railroad track, now you're at the next one. Left on Murray, um, then another 20 feet right on Fairfield. Current process there is to straighten out the intersection at Murray. You'll still be able to left turn, right turn on the East Butler. Um, discussion underway on Fairfield Drive to close that intersection. So there'll be no access to Fairfield Drive from East Butler at its current location. That will be closed and then at the behind the uh, uh, church and at the uh, Mira building, uh, there'll be a little cul-de-sac put there. So if you come down Fairfield Drive um, and you can get to that business, you can get to the Methodist Church, uh, you can get into Methodist Church parking lot. Uh, but you will not be able to do a through fare onto East Butler. So that's the current status of that. Uh, theoretical perfect solution for us would have been to align Murray and Fairfield Drive, put up a signal. Uh, the proximity to the railroad track precludes that. Um, uh, insufficient queuing or the ability to stack up cars that might be traveling through there um, and making their right turns. Uh, onto businesses there off of East Butler. Uh, so the current the process is to close Fairfield Drive. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so moving on around uh, the turf. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the, well, we can talk about basically the medias. Uh, the city still would like to see some planted medias, not that uh, preclude the ability to turn left or right into our businesses. We, we want to maintain a, but there are some areas that we thought that would be nice to put a planted media in. As you're coming then into uh, the city center proper area, uh, you're, you're seeing that there's something coming. So uh, nice greenery there, slowing you down a little bit. You're looking around, that visibility to our business will help a good, excuse me, a good bit, as well as when you get to our sports center, our city center and uh, city hall and, and those areas. So. Uh, we still have strategic planted medias type thing that would be in what we would now call the turn lane, but it would not impact the ability to turn into the existing businesses uh, along East Butler Road there. So that's still in there. Uh, we come to the intersection of Hyde Circle, which is city on street uh, on the left, Bonaire on the right. Those aren't aligned perfectly. So there are various options underway there to align uh, Bonaire with Hyde Circle and also be able to give you left turn, right turns off of both of those streets onto our East Butler. And of course, there's a major drainage issue at that same area. So those will be uh, impacted and also took into consideration. Uh, we've given them some feedback, suggestions on uh, how to align those two. The city is willing to uh, help with the uh, alignment using more of the Hyde Circles uh, east side uh, and uh, not impact the right-of-way on uh, 
at the Bon Air where uh, mo most of us remember Ed's Handy Mart being uh, Mama's Hot Dogs, if you will. Uh, that's the vacant site right now. We had a, um, uh, a restaurant that wanted to build there, was ready to build. And uh, when DOT came in with their proposed alignment of taking more and more of that right away, uh, that didn't fit the design criteria for uh, that restaurant. So it's on hold right now. We hope to be able to get it back. We've asked them to look at leaving uh, the Bonaire segment where it is, go straight across and actually uh, look at some property there that would allow you to go straight across. It would give more um, access to the uh, Hispanic supermarket there, as well as potentially get the restaurant uh, back on the books, if you will. That was to be a half million dollar investment. Uh, a lot of excitement for there. We do address up uh, one of our uh, intersection corners. Uh, it was a win-win we thought. Uh, either option does impact the parking a little bit uh, with uh, Emmanuel Bible Church. Uh, so that's gotta be worked out. Coming off Bonaire, you know, the right turn on the East Butler is terrible. So of course the improving of those intersections makes that right turns, left turns, uh, more safe, if you will, but it does take a little, some property, and I think it does impact the church somewhat with that right turn on the East Butler. So that's still under discussion there. Uh, I haven't seen the latest that when DOT came back last week. We focused on the next intersection, which is the Old Mill Bethel Drive intersection in alignment there. Uh, there were three alternatives uh, there. The preferred way was to realign Bethel Drive, going through the Taylor's property over the uh, uh, Gilder Creek Blue Line tributary, uh, the little pond, the wetlands that are there. That impacted uh, four to five homes on Bethel Drive as well as on some on Fargo. Uh, it also added a second traffic light uh, within 1,200 feet on East Butler. Um, it's, it didn't sit well, if you will, with the majority of the uh, folks uh, who uh, had looked at it. There was another, uh, another alternative one, which was the one the old tool study does, uh, came back with in 2016. The city got behind, the city council endorsed. Uh, they endorsed again this year uh, that says we want uh, Bethel Drive and Old Mill alignment straight across. Uh, that would impact some properties, some private homes there, as well as some of the uh, mobile homes in the mobile home park. Uh, that uh, has another big issue. And the biggest issue is that mobile home park is, uh, since federal funds are involved, it is defined as a environmental justice area, meaning it is uh, a, a large uh, minority-based community, uh, Hispanic in nature, uh, that it would, with that alignment, it impacted, I think, 10 mobile homes. And the ratio was just you were impacting a minority-based uh, low-income area disproportionately to uh, of the other homes on the other side. So that is continuing topic of discussion with that. We've uh, seen other alternatives on that same inter uh, intersection to put slight curves in on the northbound side. Um, the meeting last week with the OT uh, basically said, uh, in we came in agreement that everything south of East Butler Road, that would be back toward the Fargo uh, Street area, uh, should be minimized impact. So, or no impacts while we've asked for. So that says, how do we do it on the northbound side without affecting disproportionately uh, the minority-based community type thing? That's a real challenge. So we're looking at different ways of making uh, wider radius curves in there that would tie Old Mill into Bethel Drive in an alignment that would have one signalized intersection. And, um, versus their preferred alternative, which was uh, adding two intersections. There's another alternative that we had gone over that same way. And they basically you come up Bethel Drive, you veer to the left, 
you realign uh, Bethel Drive to the left, uh, you go through the property there that many of us love, that uh, the beautiful gardens down there and the bridge that uh, it's a great photo shot area with uh, the uh, proms and uh, uh, weddings and things like that. Uh, we like to call it the Lemille property because it's owned by the Lemille family. Uh, but their alternative goes through that property and then goes through various townhomes in Cameron Place. Uh, it impacted five or six of the buildings. Um, seemed like it was about 12 to 15 of the townhomes, but it gave a perfect alignment on the westbound side or the west side of CVS and lines into Old Mill Road with the great intersection there. That did have its problems on the northbound side as far as access for the three businesses there, uh, along with the uh, the properties for sale on the uh, corner there also of uh, Old Mill Road. So they did come back with other alternatives. I think last Wednesday we sat down and we had five different alternatives on the table. Uh, we eliminated those uh, by consensus between city of Malden officials as well as DOT officials that had disproportionately impact to the residentials. That included impact to the mobile home parks and impact to the homes on Bethel and Fargo. Uh, uh, one of the things they promised was to make tweaks. Uh, some of the tweaks uh, have a little more logic involved, we think, uh, but uh, still didn't give us the alignment we really prefer, which is old mill straight across to uh, Bethel Drive. Put in a few curves in there to minimize the impact to the mobile home park. Uh, so we they've gone back, they're gonna retweak the tweak, if you will. Uh, trying to get a little wider radius of the curve that would be implemented coming off of Old Mill to line up there. There's some technical engineering uh, challenges there, considering line of sight, uh, the ability for people to uh, come around the curve and see, oh, there's a red light there, and be able to stop. So uh, current law does say that a red light, to you, if it's red, you stop. Uh, you stop when it's red, not six seconds after it was red. So we all know that story. We can talk about that in another session if you'd like. Uh, so there is our big challenge. They also tweak the preferred alternative coming off of realigning Bethel Drive, going through the uh, Taylor property, uh, across the creek, again, a bridge there. And they moved it a little more back westbound, which is, I think, one of the original signs that it comes out now with uh, an intersection that would tie into the west entrance of Cameron Place, right next to Joy Real Estate in there, and signalize that intersection off. So it still gives us two red lights within uh, roughly 1,200 feet of each other. Um, that is not the city's preferred that is not the input that came back from the citizens, which by the way, they've got, we've seen them now. Uh, it was like 170 something responses that the citizens including in person as well as those who submitted uh, comments. Uh, DOT has those. Um, they've helped off responding to those right now, pending uh, these tweaks being agreed to with the uh, city officials and the elected officials that uh, you, the citizens, elected us to do and represent, uh, staying with our vision and uh, the old tool design and things like that. But they looked at it. Um, there's technical reasons that has to be a consideration. Uh, uh, the least impact, if you will, they have moved it away from Fargo, so it doesn't impact uh, the homes up Fargo. It doesn't impact as much the homes on the right of Bethel Drive with the exception of the property still at uh, Fargo and Bethel uh, Drive is still impacted, but not the home itself. It looks like the tweak shows it uh, westbound enough that it just cuts to the edge of the property, possibly up to the carport. So anyway, that's a tweak they put together type thing. Uh, they, they hope to have back to us within two weeks uh, via a uh, resume uh, uh, session like we're doing today that would show the tweaks of the tweaks and see if we can come into agreement um, and uh, 
then the city officials, elected officials will need to make that decision type thing. So stay in touch with all of us. Uh, we continue to read the comments and uh, see that and be briefed on that. Uh, but ultimately it is a DOT uh, project and it's also involves federal funds. So there are federal guidelines uh, and government involvement. And uh, most of you know my take on that, but it is what it is. So we'll do the best we can, but there are a lot of win-wins in getting this project done, which is first of all, get a smooth road out there and get these uh, pothole uh, boulevard, if you will. Uh, a dear, dear friend of uh, of mine, uh, I watched her grow up, uh, is uh, good at putting that out, uh, pothole boulevard. I do not disagree with her, but uh, getting that fixed and we want it done and we wanted it done a long time ago, but we're getting there that type of thing. So don't let me digress here. Uh, let me move on down. Uh, the next intersection heading toward the high school that we run into is really not an intersection, but uh, it is. Uh, the two entrances to Brook Bend, uh, to Holly Springs uh, called Brook Bend there with a nice green space between the two. Uh, if you live there and you've been driving for 25, 30 years, you don't think it's confusing. Uh, if you go down through there sometimes and you happen to meet cars coming out of Holly Springs as you're going in, it is a point of a thought process as to which way they going, which way am I going, who has a right of way uh, as they merge into one Brook Bend uh, there. So the thought process was to improve that entrance way at Brook Bend with the new standards which the federal government as long as and along with DOT says that if it touches this East Belt Road segment it must be addressed brought up to code and improved from a safety standpoint. So that's part of what went into uh, realigning and using the east entrance way to Holly Springs and closing the uh, more western side uh, and let that just be access coming back to Brook Bend and then come out there. Uh, so that's been on the book since 2015, uh, 2016 type thing was to fix that uh, intersection. It just so happens, uh, and this is a fact, not an opinion, it just so happens that there is a townhome uh, development going in straight across the street. And we work with them in putting their entrance where it did line up with Brook Bend on the eastbound side type thing. So we have one intersection, both of them coming to uh, the new safety standards type thing. So that came about after decision was made uh, or recommended that we only have one entrance into Holly Springs at, uh, at Brook Bend. So that's been that way since 2015, 2016. Uh, and now the townhome comes in, they were able to move their driveway eastbound a little bit to line up with that and, and make it a good intersection. Currently, there are no plans to signalize it. Uh, so that uh, that could be a topic of a, a, another day, but uh, the volume doesn't say that it needs to be signalized at this point, even with the townhome coming online across the street there. So that's the last intersections impact. And then as you go up around the hill, if you look to the left, you see our ball fields, you see our walking trail. There will be tie-in segments there from the multi-use path that's going to be on the northbound side uh, that will tie into that walking path and then get you around the uh, ball fields, come out on Corn Road and tie you back into the uh, sidewalks uh, there, walking path that we could put in there get back up on the East Butler and go on over, uh, heading eastbound to uh, the red light at the uh, high school parking lot. There's a crosswalk there. And then that gets you to our uh, new walking trail segment, quarter mile segment there that goes along the Lawrence Electric Eastman and goes down to, uh, right now it stops the dead ends at 385, uh, just past the uh, sound walls where the Bridgeway Station Bridge should be under construction uh, within the year uh, there. So that would give us access to uh, across to the other side of 385 for pedestrian traffic. 
which is also in the city of limits of Malden to the new Bridgeway Station development. Uh, you also, most of you saw the press on that, uh, that is underway. You saw all them moving dirt. So uh, that one is uh, fast and furious right now also going on there. So we definitely look forward to that. And so to tie that pedestrian traffic over a major interstate was a huge, huge step for us. Uh, uh, that bridge will be an iconic landmark. You're going to love it. If you hadn't seen it, go online and see the pictures that are posted on that also. So that's our overall East Butler Road project corridor. Uh, a lot of talking uh, from me today, but uh, I still don't see anyone raising hands as far as any questions type thing there. So it will hopefully we'll give you an overview of uh, the main thing to remember, this East Butler Road corridor, or building a better butler, is it's called .com, is if you can go online and look at it, uh, building a better butler .com, uh, and see the various alternatives. Like I said, there's a couple of others that have come about. So uh, we rule out the ones that had significant impact to uh, private residents. Uh, and we're trying to narrow it down to two or three uh, of the five alternatives. Uh, we'll rank them one, two, and three, I guess, uh, with the one that uh, we really want, then if it becomes technically impossible, uh, then we'll get down to a decision of we'll, we will accept this to get the project moving. As long as it accomplishes the overall goal that we all agreed on 2015, 2016, DOT is improving the flow of traffic on East Butler. The key word there, guys, is the flow of traffic, not volume. The traffic studies show with everything that's coming online and tying in, the traffic study shows both DOT's traffic study, the one we did in 2015, or we sanctioned in 2015, it was done by uh, O'Toole Designs. Um, so those show that uh, with the projected growth, East Bell Road as a three lane or two lane with the center, center turn lane uh, will handle the volume. Uh, but we need to improve the flow to keep it moving. And you do that by getting traffic off of East Butler that are turning right or turning left into the various intersections went over detail. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's the flow, their design, uh, and they're the experts on this. Their design criteria show uh, East Butler can handle the volume if we get the flow better. We get the flow better by changing and uh, improving the intersections. Um, along with their guidelines and the federal government's guidelines uh, with the money that's involved to make good, smooth intersections. And yes, that will impact some of the uh, right of way and some of the businesses and the churches. Um, and so it's a, uh, I hate to use a word, but it's a compromise. And so uh, we just have to look at our terms and see what we can do and how much impact we can have with DOT along with their guidelines and come up with a good East Butler Road segment, uh, dressed up, smooth, good sidewalks, walking path on the side of it. Uh, those of you that have been here a long time and close to my age or a little bit less knows, well, we ain't got that many walkers or bicycles. Why don't we have to do that? Well, if you read the studies, and see the concepts, see the in the uh, cities and the small towns that are improving it. Pedestrian flow and pedestrian traffic is on the increase. Uh, the demographics show uh, the next generations, two or three or four generations behind me, uh, want more walkability, want safe walking, bicycling areas, and not be involved in the flow of traffic uh, by being on the main through fares. So uh, that's in there. Uh, it is on the northbound side, if you will. If you're coming from the high school, driving toward uh, city center, it'll be on your right-hand side. Sidewalks on the left-hand side. So that all is still in there. It impacts uh, various businesses that come down through there. Is it the perfect solution for bicycles with all what we call curb cuts or the driveway entrances to our various businesses? No, it's not perfect. But if we give the ability to have other uh, segments that would get you off of East Butler and take you through some of the uh, 
alignments along some of the waterways and tributaries and uh, right of ways that currently are in there with rewilding out. Uh, we can give you various ways to get away from East Butler and still heading toward the city center. Uh, remember, our goal is to get you in the city center. So that's another aspect of this, not a goal, but an aspect to give you plenty of things to do within our downtown area, our defined downtown area, our walkable concept uh, with the various things there, whether town homes, restaurants, uh, local pubs uh, and eateries type thing. Uh, we got some great entertainment coming up at our cultural center. We got the Beach and Friday series getting ready to start up. Thank goodness we're all back. Again, coming out uh, with uh, uh, post-COVID and uh, we're uh, getting to see each other again. We're still social distance, still keeping in mind uh, some safety precautions, that thing. But to get our entertainment and get you back into the city center and ultimately tie that uh, walking path, uh, swamp rabbit trail, bicycle path, whatever you want to call it, uh, all the way up to ICAR. And uh, where Greenville is coming into ICAR, we're coming from the south side and tie those segments in and you'll be able to ultimately bicycle or walk from um, Lower Fountain Inn all the way to Traveler's Rest for pedestrian and bicycling type things. So that's exciting uh, and I look forward to it and that. So if there's no other comments, uh, uh, you can email me uh, at tmerritt at maldencitysc.com. Uh, give me your thoughts, uh, any questions you have. We will repeat this segment on Friday, this coming Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. For those that couldn't be here uh, this morning, uh, we'll go over the same outline, same concept. Uh, hopefully, I'll repeat the same opinions. Hold me to that and uh, see what we come up with. So with that being said, if there's no further comments, um, I wish you a good day. Stay safe out there. And remember, the city of Malden, we're open. We're open for business. We're open for our residents. Uh, it's a great, safe place. Uh, we have fantastic public safety in our police department and in our fire department. Uh, so it's a safe city to raise your family in. Uh, we've got lots of new, exciting uh, opportunities for you to shop local uh, and new homes coming online. So uh, remember, many of our small businesses are still wide open, so they need you to come back, uh, whether it's uh, eateries or clothing places or uh, get a haircut, uh, whatever. Look around. Upstate, uh, our uh, child care centers are coming back open. Uh, new uh, concepts for some of the new ones you've seen in the recently uh, shop local segments we're doing. You'll see those on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram accounts for the city. So peruse of those and come up to speed to see what Malden is doing and why this East Butler Road revitalization or building a better Butler is an important piece of that. And we'll get the best thing we can and give you the positive uh, reactions and the positive things that will come out of that. So stay safe, have a good week, and we'll see you Friday afternoon. Thank you.